Barbara Mandrell was one of country music's biggest stars in the 70s and 80s. Along with her two talented sisters, Louise Mandrell and Arlene Mandrell, Barbara had great success not only with her music career, but also with the Barbara Mandrell Show variety series that aired on NBC from 1980 to 82. The trio was known as Barbara Mandrell and the Mandrell Sisters, and they wowed audiences with their stellar harmonies, musical versatility, comedy sketches, and glamorous style. During Barbara's peak years, she charted over 30 top 10 hits on the country charts and earned numerous awards from the Country Music Association, Academy of Country Music, and American Music Awards. In this video, we'll catch up with Barbara Mandrell, now 74 years old, as well as her sisters Louise and Arlene, and discuss what happened to these famous country stars. Facts First presents What Happened to Barbara Mandrell and the Mandrell Sisters Early Life Barbara Ann Mandrell was born December 25, 1948, to parents Mary Ellen and Irby Mandrell in Houston, Texas. The eldest of three daughters, Barbara grew up in a very musical household. At age six, the family relocated to Oceanside, California, where Irby opened a music store. Mary Ellen taught young Barbara piano and accordion, while Irby gave her lessons on the steel guitar. Barbara quickly demonstrated prodigious aptitude on the complicated instrument, earning the nickname the Princess of Steel by age 11. Barbara's musical gifts secured her spots touring on the country circuit as a preteen with legends like Patsy Cline and Johnny Cash. Irby soon formed the Mandrell family band, featuring Barbara on steel guitar, Mary Ellen on piano, Irby on guitar, and middle sister Louise learned guitar and bass. Youngest daughter Arlene joined in on drums and vibraphone. The Mandrell family band toured extensively, including USO shows entertaining troops abroad. Barbara's Early Recording Career Barbara retired briefly from music after high school to start a family with new husband Ken Dudney. But while visiting Nashville's Grand Ole Opry, she felt the pull to perform again. New manager and father Irby secured Barbara a record deal with Columbia, where she released her first single in 1969, a cover of the R&B song I've Been Loving You Too Long. Though her early releases blended country, pop, and soul, Barbara soon earned favor with tradition-minded country audiences by touring with stars like Johnny Cash and joining the Opry cast in 1972. Now signed to ABC Dot Records, Barbara broke through to mainstream popularity in 1978 with the number one country hit, Sleeping Single in a Double Bed, followed by covers of classic R&B chart toppers, If Lovin' You Is Wrong, in 1979, and Years by Ivory Joe Hunter in 1980. Barbara pioneered a flashy, dance-heavy concert approach, featuring multiple costume changes, choreography, and displaying her instrumental diversity on steel guitar, saxophone, banjo, bass, and more. This country pop fusion, showmanship, and sassy songs about marital mishaps fueled her meteoric rise. The Mandrell Sisters Variety Show Barbara's national TV exposure expanded when she, Louise, and Arlene began co-hosting weekly primetime music and comedy variety show Barbara Mandrell and the Mandrell Sisters on NBC from 1980 to 82. The trio's sibling banter, glamorous style, musical performances, and sketches portraying funny character versions of themselves brought country music into mainstream pop culture with record viewership. The relentless workload ultimately caused Barbara to walk away from the smash hit program at the peak of its popularity. Dominating the Charts, Concerts and Awards Propelled by national TV exposure, Barbara became country music's top female vocalist in the early 80s. She landed over 30 Billboard Top 10 country singles like Crackers and Years, along with numerous number one hits, including I Was Country When Country Wasn't Cool. Barbara still stands as the only woman, besides Taylor Swift, to win the CMA Entertainer of the Year Award twice, taking the honor in 1980 and 81 by attracting huge arena crowds with her polished, high-energy stage productions. That chart domination reflected country music's overall shift towards pop country styles during the urban cowboy era. Always adventurous, Barbara's recordings fused contemporary R&B and rock while still showing her Texas grit on rootsier album cuts. 
Respected as an artist and trailblazer, Barbara also won consecutive ACM and AMA female vocalist honors, plus a Grammy for her gospel album, He Set My Life to Music. Surviving Tragedy At the peak of her white-hot success, tragedy struck when a drunk driver collided head-on with Barbara's vehicle in 1984, nearly killing her. The accident broke her leg, damaged her knee, and left lasting back and ankle pain. Brain swelling caused temporary memory loss that altered her personality, before eventually improving over subsequent years. While Barbara recovered from those extensive physical injuries, she also endured the emotionally painful obligation to sue the deceased driver's estate simply so her insurance would pay medical bills. Though reluctant and regretful over the unwanted publicity, legal protections for accident victims left Barbara no choice. But that stress impacted Barbara's reputation at a challenging time. Persevering as times change Displaying steely determination, Barbara fought back from near devastation. Just eight months after the crash, she began performing with Dolly Parton for a tour and relief concert. She slowly rebuilt her vocal strength and physical stamina. She landed several more top 10 hits, like No One Mends a Broken Heart Like You, in 1986. She signed new label deals as country shifted towards youth-focused artists like Randy Travis and the Judds. Graceful Retirement in October 1997, at just 49 years old, Barbara Mandrell bid farewell from touring and recording. Despite drawing large crowds right up to that final performance, which was made into the TV special The Last Dance, she yearned to spend more time with her children and to focus on acting. She sold all her instruments and quit performing entirely. Over the ensuing decades out of the public spotlight, glimmers of Barbara's enduring star power have emerged. In 2009, she was inducted into the prestigious Country Music Hall of Fame. Various contemporary artists have credited her influence as well, including crossover sensations like Faith Hill, Shania Twain, and Carrie Underwood. The Legacy of Connection While individual accomplishments made Barbara a household name for a time, the warmth exuded between all three makes the Mandrells beloved. Early reviews praised their NBC show's comical depiction of squabbling sisters with blameless familial chemistry that felt endearingly authentic. Barbara noted, quote, I think there's just something so non-threatening about sisters. It was just a family show. Beyond topping charts, the Mandrells connected fans to universal experiences of sisterhood with harmony and good humor even amid chaos. So the Mandrells' place in history springs not only from their independent talents, but also an intangible sisterhood magnetism. Together, they cast musical spells, meshing boundary-breaking entertainment with the relatability of family ties. Now it's time to hear from you. What's your favorite memory of Barbara Mandrell and the Mandrell sisters? Let us know in the comments section below.